Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, roll up, roll up, roll up your sleeves and get your working hands on the hottest economic advice around. Proving there is nothing taxing, haha, -ha, or sinister about going left, Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell has invited his favourite economists to get out of Westminster and deliver a series of public lectures, amongst them Paul Mason. Here's Giles on the stars of the Shadow Chancellor's Moulin Rouge. John McDonald's Shadow Chancellor welcomes the world to his Moulin Rouge. On the new economics bill, there's been advice from the brightest left side of the brain, Marion Mazzucato. Then, economic cocktails served with a bowl of Joseph Stiglitz. Empresario John McDonald himself chatted to Danny Dawling, not to be confused with Danny Dyer, although that would have been a funny chat. Then there was the wisdom of Harjun Chang, followed by the economic equivalent of being hit by a scooter driven by a well-groomed Greek rock star, Yanis Varoufakis. Does it get better? Yes, it does. Top of the bill tomorrow. The gritty growl of reformed revolutionary TV personality Paul Mason. <laughs> what a bravura performance there from Giles Dillnott. And there he was with his guide to Labour's economic lecture tour. But what policy is actually emerging from all this economic wonkery? And will it help Labour win the next election? Well, to discuss that, we're joined by the Blairite commentator, John Rental. The Blairite Welcome. commentator. Is that your oh, right. Blairite commentator. Let's have that discussion afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> the commentator, John Rental who supports Blair. Uh, Blairite economics, anyway, we're using for this discussion. Now, Paul Mason, Ed Ball said in January 2014 there will be no more borrowing for day-to-day -day spending. Last month, John McDonnell said, we believe that governments should not need to borrow to fund their day-to-day -day spending. So it's just the same. I don't think it is. Uh, I think that the fiscal rule that McDonnell uh, outlined is looser, even, even on current spending, because it can be looser if we hit the zero bound with interest rates, um, and we, we have. So you could say, at a, at a time like this, I would interpret that. I'm not Shadow Chancellor, but I would interpret that as saying, look, we have more leeway on current spending. We have more leeway, certainly, on investment spending. And, and as I'm going to be outlining in my, thing, uh, my lecture for him this week, uh, in any case, fiscal policy policy is not the main thing. Once you have, once you have a, an unorthodox monetary policy such as we have, printing money, um, uh, pr guaranteeing no interest rate rises for a certain period of time, you actually have a spillover between fiscal and monetary policy that allows a future Labour Chancellor actually to stimulate the economy. Right, but it's not radically different. I mean, Ed Balls used to talk about stimulating the economy. He used to talk about the borrowing the to invest. The government is, st is strangling the economy. Even if you stimulated it mildly, I would argue it would feel a lot different, and again, you would draw, you would put, you would give businesses a predictable environment for the expansion of the NHS, the expansion of the education sector, the expansion of science and R and D that just isn't happening right now. Right. Well, John McDonnell has said he is against austerity and that those cuts no, no, that the Tory government, well, that he no, but he has said that he wouldn't put in place the sort of cuts that the Tory government is proposing because there would be growth in the economy from the investment that the Labour Party would make. That is a departure from Labour before. Well, rhetorically, yes, but I mean, uh, you know, we've just, I, I've come here to commiserate with Paul because, um, you know, he's, he's, he's backed John McDonnell, who um, was the campaign manager for somebody called Jeremy Corbyn. He should have been the campaign manager for Liz Kendall because Liz Kendall was actually saying all those things uh, during the leadership campaign that you've got to balance the current spending and that you've got to borrow only, only to invest in, in order actually. to... Liz Kendall was 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 a very good candidate, and she argued for um, fiscal uh, responsibility, which John McDonnell has now adopted. Mm. I mean, I know you 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 want to get out of what he's said by by invoking the the lower bound well, uh, they, escape I mean, if they did it, No, they but, would, wouldn't they? Yes, but I mean, yeah, but you can't possibly agree with uh, Liz Kendall's policy, which John McDonnell has now adopted for normal. And he, and he is uh, talking fiscal about times. fiscal responsibility, yeah, isn't he? He because, needs to try and get the public to trust Labour again, and he is well, really doing the same things as as certainly the previous Labour uh, front bench well, and almost the Tory government. The, the reason all governments have had fiscal rules is because they make sense. I mean, the, in a, in the sense there is a cross-party oh. academic agreement. Yes. That if, that, that you know. It's how it works. If you if the economy hits a, a rough patch, you spend some more now, and so make it grow, and then later the growth helps you pay back what you borrowed. That's been that's 
that's the basic principle of all, all fiscal policy, but to formalise it uh, stops you. And this is, I think, the reason why McDonald's done this. It stops your own supporters, you know, the unions, people in the labour, in the momentum, etc., thinking that everything be can be sorted by tax rises on the rich or you know spending boosts it signals to your own party that there are limits to these things and that other things have to take over like industrial policy like nationalizing the steel industry like boosting uh, monetary growth but he is going to john mcdonnell and if labor were in power they would add to the deficit wouldn't they yeah, i mean they I, would I, borrow no, and... no, they would add, they, well you add to the debt you 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 run a deficit mm. you add to the debt he said that the hardest thing for him to do actually under this policy will be to get the debt down at the end of five years the deficit Thing I think is doable. The thing is, Ed Miliband failed uh, to get elected with those sorts of arguments, the Tory arguments, I'm pretty forward, that talking about fiscal responsibility, saying that he would balance the books, saying he would be responsible. So those isn't aren't this Tory thing, arguments. Isn't those, those, are... Well, but that was, that was really what Ed Miliband was echoing while they were in the government with the coalition. So isn't it time for Labour to choose a different path, a slightly yeah, but, looser but, but economic Paul's just, Paul's just admitted that they haven't chosen a different path. They're going to have the same path, which is, no, to, which is no. to get debt uh, as a share it. of... Debt yeah. as a share of trend GDP yeah. down by the end of the parliament. Yeah. And that is what and he's that saying. Is, yeah, it is. That, is, that is something that... that, that, that Wait that, until that, he gets his you hands. You and Jeremy Corbyn yeah. supporters condemned well, as well, neoliberalism well, Jeremy Corbyn and supporters austerity. or the Labour lead, leadership supporters. Um, look, Wait until they, we, get our hands on the Office for Budget Responsibility. When it starts to calculate the real impact of fiscal stimulus on growth, there'll be a lot more fiscal stimulus allowed, even under McDonald's rules. That's number one. Oh, yes. Two, it, you can do more QE. So Three, you're, just, you're just going to change... You can do more change. QE. You can do more QE. That's what I'm going to be saying in my lecture. You can so do you, a lot more so QE. So you don't want an independent Office for Budget Responsibility? Yes. You want it, you yeah, want I, but I want, it, budget, I want budget it to be independent of the Treasury. Oh, I want I it to be independent of the Treasury, not using the Treasury's dumb, to be honest, uh, fiscal multipliers that don't agree with the IMFs. We should use fiscal multipliers that actually say, if you invest in the economy... That the you want in the first the, place. Well, Osborne's one kind of does. In fact, Osborne's OBR produced the answers he wanted without producing any of the growth he wanted. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's why Osborne's having to reverse out of austerity himself. He's 4.5 billion out of his own austerity plan over the parliament. Yes, no, he's reversed out to a position uh, which was occupied by Ed Balls in the last parliament. Look, absolutely. And which is now Ed occupied Balls's by John McDonnell. plan was pretty McDonald. good. John McDonnell, John McDonnell and his supporters don't, do not diss Ed Balls' plan. We just need a different and more sophisticated oh, plan cool. going it, forward. In the end, what is going to be more credible for the public? I mean, are fiscal rules, whether you stick to them, whether they're artificially well, made, they're broken, do, they they? Make, do they make any difference? It showed by the last election well, that they clearly did make a difference. So, well, it, even if the Tories argue, Come well, on, yeah. well, is that the case? I, I that, that, that's not why the Tories won. to win elections for Labour? I think Labour will govern, Jeremy Corbyn will, will be Prime Minister strange though it might seem to the Westminster bubble, is if they tell the British people a story that is believable about how our children get decent jobs, secure jobs, and a decent lifestyle without having to basically win the X Factor or become a professional footballer. No, you just that's, need to be convinced to see that vision, John yeah. <laughs> No, but I actually agree with that. I think that is how Labour uh, could, win, could win an election, but I, I don't see how they could possibly do so under, uh, under Jeremy Corbyn or John McDonnell's leadership, because, because that's not actually what what they're offering the, the, the British people. They're offering the British people uh, anti-Americanism and fantasy economics. And that's not, that's not a, a, a programme that the British hey, people... Hey, if Sanders wins, I'll be very pro-American. Right, what about... <laughs> <will you? laughs> yeah. What about this fantasy economics that you talked about? What, what, what's the fantasy bit about it? Well, the fantasy is, is what, they, what they really believe, as opposed ah, to what John so McDonnell has recently, last month before the budget, suddenly decided to, to adopt, which is, which is conventional economic thinking, which is that you ought to balance the books over the, over the economic so cycle. So you think that would be and abandoned? If, if, they, if they came to power, that, that would be abandoned and they would revert to well, some sort of socialist doctrine that you believe they, they still hold by? Well, I don't think John McDonnell really believes it. So, you know, and I don't. Th so, I don't think he's got any credibility in arguing for that. But I'd say that is the that is the base from which any party has to has to approach uh, a general election. And you can't convince people uh, to give you the keys. Let's to be clear. We're not, we're not saying balance the books over the economic cycle. That's not what McDonnell is saying. He's saying balance well, the current books. Balance the current books. He does say balance the current books in five years' reduce, time. In five years' time. Reduce debt. Could, nobody. It was Gordon Brown who had a, an economic cycle based rule. Um, these the rules. Of of Ed Balls, the current government, etc., are not recycle-based. Really number one. Number two, 
I think that's a detail. Well, you know, we could, what does infrastructure uh, involve? A lot of infrastructure is not just simply building tunnels under the Pennines. It is about building uh, the capacity of the workforce. You know, there's a lot you can do with under the, under the label infrastructure that actually cascades over into a, not you know, steel construction, for example. So it's like, look, the... We will not at the end of the cycle or the five years under the under the current fiscal rule Labour's trying to trying to implement or would implement you would get a big infrastructure boost early on in any parliament that would stimulate growth it would draw jobs in having and uh, what would uh, happen to the debt and the deficit well the deficit might rise over the short term that's right. the idea and the debt would come down as a proportion of GDP because over the period the growth would the growth would come, which is not are you going to be a conservatives. No, but, that, but, but no, if, if, <laughs> they're going, if they're going to convert to conventional mm. um, economics, I mean, then you'll fiscal, res fiscal responsibility, then I'm all for that. I've always, you know, you know the, the, the Blairites in the Labour Party have always been in favour of that, and it's good to hear them uh, come on board. But the question is whether they really believe it. John Rental, thank you.